This is warfare against Satan and his demons. If you will notice, this is lesson 3, but part 1. Because there will be a part 2. Hindi gid ka igo. Hindi gid ka igo ang, uh, ang lesson in one session. In fact, I am praying that we will be able to end this uh, on time as always. But we have separated the lecture on warfare against fallen angels because demons are not the same as fallen angels. So, the ko gidning uh, material ang i cover sang fallen angels themselves. Okay, let's just do a quick review, especially for those who were not here last time. We said that the Christian has three enemies warfare against the flesh, and warfare against the world, and warfare against Satan and his demons and his fallen angels. So, three classes of enemies. We must first win the war against the flesh so that we stand a chance of winning the war against the world. And we shared last time that the operational principle of the flesh is very simple. It starts with desires. Any desire that is not aligned with the will of the Lord, if that desire is acted out into deeds or acts, then the enemy has a foothold if it is not addressed, confessed, repented of, then it becomes a stronghold. And any stronghold is immediately an open gate to the enemy, particularly demonization. Now, the flesh, the old nature, is being made kutibao by the world. And the world principle has two dynamics. Satanic control and a sinful culture. It should be sinful culture. And it operates on three principles. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Tanan nga operational principles ang worldly system naga insight, nagaganyat sang unod, gaganyat sang mata, kag bugal sang kabuhi. Tatlo lang gidna ka great operational principles. And we were saying that we must win the war against the flesh and against the world in our personal life before we hope to engage directly with the evil spirit world. And now we pay attention to the spirit world. After the flesh, after the world, this is now what we need to meet head on. So I will read this again, Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The word scheme is the Greek word schema, which is the English word strategy. It means that Satan is studying us. His demons and his fallen angels are looking at us, looking for patterns, looking for entry points because he launches his attack in a studied manner. Gina istudyuhan kita. And the word of the Lord continues to say, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. In other words, maski anong ugtas ta sa mga tao, hindi sila gid ang kontra, but against the rulers, against the authorities, who are also called principalities, against the powers of this dark world, amuni ang i-take up tas gabi, this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Because the forces in the dark world are not the same as the forces in the heavenly realms. That is what we will point out tonight. We will study the forces in the heavenly realms separately. And look at what it continues to say. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, please take note, it is not if, it is when. We fight against the flesh, we fight against the world. We may hope that we will not encounter demons and evil spirits, but I'm sorry to inform you that the Bible assumes and presumes whether you like it or not, a day will come when you will meet head-on, not the flesh, 
not the world, but either the powers of this dark world or the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It is when, meaning to say, it is sure to come. Sigurado gid na nga maabot gid ina. Okay. Now, this is where it gets very, very interesting. The world and the heavenly realms is explained by the ranking of angelic beings. They have a rank which represents certain spheres of jurisdiction in the invisible world. In the topmost is God. Beyond God, there is no other spirit being, higher or greater. He is the uncreated creator. He is almighty. There is no one like Him. Beneath Him are the seraphs and the cherub. There is a debate among angelologists who is first, the seraph or the cherub. Some say the cherub, the others seraph. Okay. We will take that up in lesson four. But the seraph and the cherub are very unique because they are stationed beside the throne. The seraphs are above the throne. The cherubs are standing beside the throne. And they are very fearsome and very strange looking beings. Under them are the thrones. Thrones. And under the thrones are dominions. And under dominions are powers. This is how it works. Thrones, also known as rulers, are like extension offices. There is a main headquarters of the Philippine Armed Forces in Camp Aguinaldo, but there are company detachments in Tarlac, in Negros, in whatever. So they are called thrones in the angelic world. They are extension of the powers of the one main throne. And then they cover dominions or principalities which are areas that they are in charge of. Like the 11th IB, Infantry Battalion, in charge of Negros Island Command. And beneath them are powers. Powers. Angels with specific anointings or skills. Just like an army. There is a mechanized division, there is intelligence, there is reconnaissance, there is uh, whatever, etc. They are organized like, like that. And you immediately deal with ranks. ranks. According to those who have extensive experience with angels, whether on the side of the Lord or on the side of the enemy, it is further divided into three. The first hierarchic, hierarchical sphere, which is called the heavenly counselor, where the seraphs, the cherubs, and the thrones belong. You have the second hierarchy, which are the governors, governing angels, which include dominions, virtues, and powers. And then you have the third, which include principalities, archangels, and angels. We will discuss that in greater detail in lesson four. Here is the practical implication or significance of knowing the difference. It is only now when I have come to appreciate this. If you notice, Psalm 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. In the invisible world, there are gates and there are courts. Bethel was a gate. It was not a court. If you are just a thankful Christian in your heart, you are just roaming around in the gates of the spirit world. But if you want to enter into the courts, your thanksgiving in your heart must be expressed by praise and worship. The more you worship and the more you praise, 
the more you gain access into the heavenly realms. We will take that ag again. We will take that up again in lesson four. But right now, I just want you, I want us to understand and appreciate gates and courts. Gate, you can enter through the gate, but you may not have reached the court. Even in the tabernacle, there is the gate, there is the outer court, then the inner court, and the holiest court. The concept of gates and courts is very respected in the heavenly realms. We'll take that up in lesson four. Okay. Another form of ranking that we find also based on scriptures is rank number one, either the cherubim or some say the seraphim, they interchange. Then there are the throne-bearing angels. This is a new understanding for me. There are angels that, just like war, when a king sits in his palace, but he wants to direct the conduct of war, he has a mobile throne that he sometimes brings along with him so that he himself will be in command of the war situation and there are angels who are in charge of bringing the throne of the Lord whenever the Lord desires to move his throne. Sometimes the presence of the Lord in one meeting is different from another meeting. It may be that he brings his throne in one meeting. They are the throne-bearing angels of the Lord. And then there are strange creatures or beasts, easy kill one. They are angels, but they are called beasts. There is very little information about them. They are a mystery even among those who study angels. And together with them are 24 elders, and you have seraphs or cherub, principalities, powers, rulers, and messengers. But I am just showing this because in lesson 4, we will learn how to work with angels. Because in heaven, human beings sit with angels in kingdom warfare. In kingdom warfare. Okay. Here are examples of cherubim described by Ezekiel. One cherub is described as having four heads. The face of a man. Actually, dito na siya gatubang sa likod. This is the face of the eagle. Dito na siya gatubang. The face of a lion. And the face of a bull. But only one angel. Very strange angel. And it is surrounded by fire. And there are cherub guarding the throne. They look that way. This is an artist's rendition. Ezekiel, in his book, described an indescribable sight. He had a vision of the throne of the Lord, and some angels did not have form except that they were in the form of fire. Yet they were angels, yet they were fire. Others looked like wheels, and yet they were angels. And others look like creatures with wings. They are also angels. Another artist's rendition of what Ezekiel saw. This is angelic world. One particular angel that is very difficult to understand is the angel that is consisting of wheel of fire but full, full of ice. And the wheel goes this way, and inside the wheel is another wheel that goes another way. And yet, they are angels. So, this is what we will take up in lesson 4. There are also angels that have wings, but their body is full of ice and full of fires, and lightning comes out of their system. So, how to describe that? That is just beyond us. It's just incredible. So you have all these kinds of... These are all angels, and how many more angels we do not even know of. 
so many kinds of, of angels. Okay. If the Lord has his own organization, Satan also has his own organization. Satan, who is also called Lucifer or the devil, he also has his realm. He has his own chief kings and chief princes. He has his own kings and princes, kingdoms, principalities, dominions, powers. He has his generals, his legions, his cohorts, his chief captains, his rulers of captains, his centurion strongmen. And the lowest rank are demons, lowest. So when we think that we have met some very interesting character in some demonic personalities, we have just met the poor infantry men of the satanic kingdom. This is according to those who study the operations of the spirit world. Just a quick overview of what the organization means. Satan was originally a cherub, so he belonged to the highest level angel. And then there are thrones which administer the kingdom of this world under Satan. And then there are princes, archangel level, in charge of nations like the prince of Persia was a fallen angel, the prince of Greece in Daniel chapter 10 that Michael fought, we'll take that up in lesson 4, was a prince or archangel level angel, the new authorities, world rulers, spirit demons. Okay. One third of the angels went with Satan in his rebellion against God. So immediately we have comfort that two thirds of the angels remained loyal to the Lord. And of course, aside from that, the Lord is limitless in his power and he is present everywhere, but Satan is not present everywhere. So he has to operate through his angels and his demons. Some of the theories of those engaged in extensive warfare uh, teach that under Satan are chief kings and chief princes who rule various geographical and spiritual areas. And then under the kings and princes, there are dominions and powers. One angel was mentioned in the Gospels who calls himself Legion. If that is the same Roman organization of legionnaires or legion, then that is 6,000 demons or angels. Can you just imagine? And a prince is a ruler of a number of legions. And there are other smaller rank, lower rank uh, angelic beings who are in charge of a fewer number of demons or fallen angels. Okay. Now, revisiting Ephesians 6, there is a difference between the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Tonight, we are just taking up the powers of this dark world. There is not enough time to take up heavenly realms. Warfare against the demons of this dark world is not the same as the warfare against the evil in the heavenly realms. Okay. Demons, as they are commonly known, are the lowest rank in the hierarchy of Satan's kingdom. We just focus on demons tonight and how they are defeated in Christ and by us in Christ. What are demons. If you check your internet, demons are universally recognized as supernatural beings with natures both human and deity. That's how they interpret it. But ang word nga ginagamit sa King James Version is not demon but devil. You will not find the word demon in the King James Version of the Bible. What they use is devils. And they are also called unclean spirits. This is an interesting expression. Why are they unclean? They are also called familiar spirits. Okay. So what are these demons? 
I will tell you an interesting story in Genesis 6. Because of all the theories that I checked in the internet and in the books on spiritual warfare, this is the most unanimously held theory as to where demons come from. Okay. According to Genesis chapter 6, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men or humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. In some translation, they had sex with women. Question, who in the world were the sons of God? This expression. Asiling nila, the sons of God refer to the godly line of Seth who intermarried with the ungodly line of Cain. There is a big problem with the theory. It will not work. Why? How then do you explain that the marriage of the ungodly with the godly produce Nephilims who were giants? The Nephilims were giants. Just because a Christian marries a non-Christian does not mean that they will produce giants. There must be something about these sons of God. Why did they run after women and why did they produce Nephilims? And what is their connection with demons? Okay. The theory is that these were angelic beings. The Bible never really says for sure. But these were fallen angels. I know what you are thinking already. How can that be? Because angels are supposed to be sexless beings. You will have the surprise of your life that that is not true. Okay. But we have a clue as to who are the sons of God in Job chapter 1 verse 6. Job, the oldest book in the Bible says, There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. If Satan is an angelic being and he came with the sons of God who presented themselves before the Lord, the only fair conclusion is that the sons of God were also angelic beings. Which is reinforced by another chapter and verse in the book of Job, 38 verse 7, when the morning stars sang together, all the sons of God shouted for joy. Okay. So, the three categories of sons of God are either they are born again believers in Christ, Adam was also a son of God, but angels are also called sons of God. And of the three in the Bible, this is the only theory that will work. This must have been angels. What did these angels do? According to Jude, Jude, verse 5, Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered His people out of Egypt, but later destroyed who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. So there were rulers and they had thrones. They abandoned their position and went lasting after women human beings. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. In a similar way. Which means that the angels who did not keep their positions of authority engaged in sexual immorality and perversion with human beings in Genesis chapter 6. So, who are these sons of God? The Hebrew is Beni Elohim, which means sons of God or those who are like God or who sit with God because they have authority to rule the universe with God. They 
did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their dwelling and they came after women. Okay. Review again what Genesis 6 says. In the time of Noah, there were the Nephilim. But not only in the time of Noah. Verse 4 is very clear. And also afterward. The, the product of the union between these angelic beings with human beings, the Nephilim, were not only in those days, but also afterward. Okay. How could they have survived the flood? The spirit of the Nephilims. Very simple. Because when the Lord flooded the earth, the human body which they inhabited were destroyed and their spirits came out of the body. That is why they became disembodied spirits, spirits that lost their bodies. And since their spirits were not human spirits, it did not return to God. So they were just roaming around the earth looking for bodies to possess. These are the demon spirits. Okay. There were giants in David's time because the spirits of these Nephilim, although the human bodies were washed out in the flood, they continued with their activity so that in the time of the kingdom of Israel, in the book of Numbers chapter 13, that was already many hundreds of years after Genesis 6, thousands of years, there were still Nephilim with their descendants of Anak who come from the Nephilim according to the Bible, and David even had to wipe them out and kill them. You check in your internet, it is an amazing uh, fact that complete or very almost complete human skeletons have been found in many parts of the world. This is your average six-footer man and skeletons have been found in so many places proving the existence of the Nephilim. That is why you cannot blame Greek mythology for coming up with stories of supermen and superwomen creatures who have powers and yet they were human, they were given to given over to uh, human frailty, the Bible says that there were Nephilims in those days. These are some of the historical records of the Nephilim on earth. So, now, you say, I thought that angels are sexless beings. Well, that is a conclusion that we made, but which Jesus did not say. What Jesus said in Luke chapter 20, verses 34 to 37, when he was asked, if a woman dies, I mean, if a, if a husband dies and his wife did not have a child, and the brother marries his wife, and then the brother dies without a child. And then the third brother marries the wife. Whose wife will she be in heaven? This was the answer of Jesus. Neither. Because the people of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of taking part in that age and in the resurrection of the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage. And they can never die for they are like angels. They are God's children since they are children of the resurrection. So somebody made the conclusion that since they are, they are not given in marriage like angels, then angels must not have sex. But it does not follow. It does not follow. Some spirit beings are very, very sex crazy. Genesis 6 just proves that. And there are concrete results. You have heard of a spirit known as incubus. 
there are documented worldwide universal experience of people feeling that they are being raped by beings that cannot be seen. That is what you call incubus. The female version of that is succubus. And in my own personal ministry before I have met people who have been violated sexually even by invisible beings. So, what are these beings? They are spirit beings. They are interested in sex. That is why they are called unclean spirits from the point of view of defilement. Now, here is what the book of Enoch said. I am trying to establish this because I want us to come to the conclusion later in connection with lesson 4 that the way to fight these demons is not the same as when we fight with the spirit beings because we will, I will explain that later based on what we are learning here. But, Jude mentioned Enoch in his book. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, had written a book. It was discovered along with the precious parts of the Bible in the Qumran cave. And this is what Enoch explained in greater detail. He mentioned the angels by name. In Genesis 6, who were those ruling angels who did not keep their positions of authority and even mentioned their leader by the name of Azazel. Ang leader nila si Azazel, nakita nila ka mga siksi, ka mga gwapa, ka mga kaakit-akit ang mga babae, sang duta, na desire sila, manaog na to, mangita na to, etc. 200 are named in the book of Enoch. And... Uh, the book of Enoch explains how the Lord decided to deal with them and what came out of their having sex with human beings, which is an amplification of Genesis chapter 6. Okay. By the way, this is just a side note. There are books mentioned in the Bible but that are not made part of the Bible. You have the book of Enoch, you have the book of the wars of the Lord, the book of Jasher, the book of Samuel, the seer, etc., 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 etc. So many books not mentioned in the Bible, uh, not included in the Bible, but referred to in the Bible. So, it is not just limited to Genesis 6. In David's time, they were also Nephilims. Okay, now question. How could a spirit beget children? How could spirit beings beget children? This is a theory I have found because the Bible does not explain. The Bible just tells. For example, the Bible does not explain the existence of God. It just tells it in the God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 6, in the angel, the sons of God lasted after women. Wala na nag-explicar ko. Ti paano na yan? Di na nagkuha sang binhi. Ti ano na man? Ano na? How does it work? The Bible does not explain. But some people want to understand. So this is how they came about in explaining it. These demons or these spirit beings are able to switch between male and female. They are able to collect the sperm of whoever they violate, either in a heterosexual or homosexual manner. That is why uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah, the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah was so great, which... I believe had an angelic, fallen angelic, fallen angel influence in that city. But that's another story. And they collect the sperm, and when they uh, have an uh, affair with women, then that is what they use, the sperm of whoever their victim is. But they have already impacted that sperm with their own spirit, so that the sperm already carries the whatever it is that they have. 
this is how they explain it because I really tried to understand because I said, how, how can it work? And you will find so many explanations there. I will not waste my time on that anymore. So, most human sightings of ghosts actually involve these embodied spirits. They are not yet the fallen angels that we are talking about. Fallen angels are an entirely different class of spirit beings. Ini nakita din mga white lady, permila na accident din siya ng lugar. They are disembodied spirits. They are looking for bodies to possess. They are also called familiar spirits in the book of Deuteronomy because they imitate people who are dead. They pretend to be like your tatay, your nanay, your whatever, just to keep you talking to them. And without you knowing it, you are already committing an abomination because speaking with the dead is an abomination to the Lord in the book of Deuteronomy. Mediums and spiritists who facilitate speaking with the dead are killed in the Old Testament because it is an abomination to the Lord. So we are actually dealing with these embodied spirits. Okay, talking with familiar spirits, demons is abomination to the Lord. That is very severely prohibited in Leviticus chapter nineteen and Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. Remember, in Luke chapter 16, there is no crossing of the divide between the eternal states and earth. So, hindi ka magsiling, ah, si ano to, si Amuni, si Amuna, ah, ari kagali, ari. No, uh, wherever they land, that is where they land. The Christian has angelic protection. Because before I get deeper into this, some of you may begin to develop some unpleasant feelings. So I intercept this with a promise of the word of the Lord. At least two. Receive this in your spirit. Hebrews 1.14 and Psalm 91.10. Angels are sent to minister to you. And they are not alone sent to you. Always in the plural. Whenever a child of God is mentioned in the Bible, nga ginaservisan sang angel, that's never only one. It's always ministering spirits, or angels. Psalm 91.10 No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent, for he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. So this is how it might look like in the realm of the spirit. Something like that. So Enoch intercedes for these uh, fallen angels, but the Lord decides, no, this is according to Enoch, this is what uh, it is said, go say to the watchers of heaven, because they are called watchers, the fallen angels who had sex with these women, who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. Wherefore, ye have left high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defied yourselves. So there is no salvation for them, saith the Lord. And from this uh, interaction came the Nephilim. Now, there is a schedule for this disembodied spirit. May tiyon na sila nga punpuno na sila kaghusgaran. In fact, they are afraid that it will come prematurely. When the demons in Gadara or the legions in Matthew 8.29 were confronted by Jesus, ang ila question, have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Torture us. There is only one place of torture for them. That is the lake of fire. Wala pang ilang schedule to be thrown to the lake of fire. If you will read this passage, they even ask if they could please stay in the area. Because precisely they are called familiar spirits. They already know the neighborhood. They already know all the addicts, all the honky-tonks, all the blah-blah-blah all the illegal activities, they feel good already about that place. So, maski, baboy na lang ilang katuan, nagaayo sila, pwede lang nga hindi kami dire pag pahalinon. This line of the Lord Jesus Christ is a favorite uh, tool of mine when I was still very active in spiritual warfare deliverance ministry 
Because kung tig a ulo gin ang demonyo nga hindi maglakat, hindi magwa, gambal ko, kung hindi pagid kada magwa, I will ask the Lord to bring you to hell before your time. Because amo gina ang ila nga gina kul, kulbaan. No? So, recap. Demons are disembodied spirits. They are spirits of the product of the union of the fallen angels of Genesis 6 with women of those days. They produce Nephilims and giants. They became disembodied or lost their human body habitations during the flood and when David killed the Anakites. They are still on earth. They are looking for bodies to possess. They are properly called demons or familiar spirits. And the Lord warns before the second coming of Jesus Christ, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall, be, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They are expected to increase their activity in these last days. So, now, what is the difference between demons and fallen angels? Number one, demons are spirits who lost their bodies and are looking for bodies to possess. Fallen angels have their own celestial bodies. They do not necessarily need a human body to possess. That's one very important distinction. That's why when you deal with a fallen angel, not a demon, and you say, come out, come out in Jesus' name, the fallen angel might scratch his head. How can I come out when I'm already out? But that kind of a command works only with demons. Demons need human bodies to express themselves. Fallen angels have no such needs. One indicator of difference between demons and fallen angels is what Jesus said in Matthew 12, 43. When the unclean spirit comes out of the man, he walks through arid places. He just walks. He cannot afford Jibu Pacific or Philippine Airlines. He does not fly because he is not a... Spirit being fallen angel that flies. He just walks. Okay? So that is what is. Now, you will ask, why go into all this distinction? Why? It is important to know the distinction. I will discuss this in greater detail in lesson four, but tonight I just need to say one thing. You do not fight with fallen angels in the way that you fight demons. We are given authority to rebuke demons and to command them to go out in Jesus' name. But you don't go to Mount Kanlaon and address the territorial spirit and rebuke him in the same way that you would rebuke a demon inside a human body. In the first place, I want you to read the book of Jude tonight when you go home. Even Archangel Michael was very respectful to Satan. And Jude said in the book of Jude that some people have no respect for spirit beings. They slander celestial bodies which the Bible prohibits because they are higher in authority over us and the only correct way to rebuke them is to invoke a higher authority and not at your own level. We will discuss that in greater detail in lesson 4. Kay kun hang katun mo tapungulay ang fallen angels, I will not mention names, but I want you, as I talk now, I will not mention names, but I want you to remember, very recently, brethren in the Lord, who went around rebuking spirits, I will ask you, what happened to them? What happened to their health? What happened to their sanity? What happened to their thinking? What happened to their physical bodies? What happened to them? I will not elaborate further. Because you don't fight fallen angels in the same way that you fight demons. A second important difference is, remember demons originated from sexual sin. The illicit sex between angels and humans. Therefore, there is one characteristic of demons. Demons are sex-hungry. They gravitate towards sex. 
illicit sex opens up as up to demons. Look at the demonized man of Gerasin, Mark chapter 5, verse 15. He was naked. Demons love to display nudity, nudity. They are going back to their historic entry into the world, which is sexual affair with the daughters of men. They want that repeated all over. That's why demonized persons, before you know it, when the demonization gets deeper, they begin to disrobe themselves. I want you to recall all the kaluluoy people that you see here in Bacolod who just walk down the road. Because they, they just go from dangerously clothed to no more clothes. That is a work of demon. Demons want people to think dirty sex. Sex is good. The Lord created sex to be good between husband and wife in the context of marriage. When the demons left this man, he clothed himself because he was now in his proper mind. Why was Mary Magdala? According, well, actually the Bible does not directly say so, but it's just a conclusion made by some students of the Bible. Why did she have seven demons? Sex. So sexual perversion opens the door to extreme demonization. That is why sexual sin is a specially identified sin in 1 Corinthians 6. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Verse 15, Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said that two shall become in one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. Now, listen to this. Look at this. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Why? Why is this kind of sin specially mentioned as a unique sin? All other sins are lumped up into one category. They are committed outside the body. But this one sin is committed against your own body. Why? Because it brings in a spirit into your own body. All the other sins that you commit may not necessarily as yet immediately bring in a spirit into your body. But remembering Genesis 6, the sexual encounter between the sons of God, the angelic beings, and the daughters of men, then you have an understanding why this is a specially mentioned sin. Towards the end of this, we will talk about deliverance on this subject matter. So, demons are earthbound, disembodied spirits. They are the foot soldiers of Satan, his ground troops, and they are the ground implementers of Satan's agenda against us. But Christ already broke Satan's head at the cross. Okay. Now, what can Satan do in general? Things he tells his demons to do. This is a laundry list from the Bible. Number one, they can inflict diseases or inabilities. Some diseases are spirit inflicted. In this particular case, Matthew chapter 9, verse 33, may isadi ka tao, hindi ka hambal, ka, kag bulag, kag mute. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. Abilang nila, apa, pero sang narebuke ang demonyo na kahambal. So, uh, demons can inflict diseases or disabilities. Mental disorder can also be caused by demons. Why? Mark chapter 5, verses 4 to 5. There was a man who is identified to have been possessed by an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. So, nagbuang siya, violent siya, hindi siya ma makontain. And when Jesus uh, confronted him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And the Lord asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. And the Lord gave them permission. Kaya nangayo sila sa mga pigs na lang. Amuning nga si Brother Butch, hindi ginagid magtandog sang pigs. 
kay Amoni gin ang ginaamag sa mga ano. So, they went to the pigs. Okay? So, impurity also. Impure spirit. There was a man possessed by an impure spirit. I want you to notice where this man was. He was where? Now, there is a common belief that demons cannot share a place with the Holy Spirit. You can actually bring a demon with you to church. Even Satan has no problem coming to the presence of God in heaven to ask permission to torment Job. So please do not kid ourselves that, oh, I always go to church, so the demon may not be able to stand that. Oh, he might even like it more. Okay, so, so, but he was in the synagogue and he was possessed by an impure spirit. So what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. Okay, we will discuss this towards the end manifestations when demons are present and they are confronted they usually manifest ginambalan siya ni Jesus hibos come out tonto gid nga demonyo nagwa siya pero nag bilin pa siya rawit nga singgit no okay when a person prays over us to release us from demonization, many times there are physically felt manifestations nga matakos git. Do you know that demons can also be by false doctrine? Some people do not know that they have been demonized by deceiving spirits. They are socially well-dressed. They are very good-looking people. There's nothing wrong with them, but they follow deceiving spirits and things, doctrines, taught by demons. 1 Timothy chapter 4. You read 1 Timothy chapter 4 in your own time because if I touch this topic, I will digress and it will eat up 30 minutes of my time which I do not have. But, deceiving spirits and things taught by demons is another form of demonization. So, possibly, gidyaya nga, ka-professional sa imo, ka-nami sa imo, nakapabelo ka, dasun ka kakain gid say mo pero why ka kabalo demonized ka may something sa kabuhi mo nga naisahan ka na intuan ka demons also possess they can enter bodies and possess just like this mark chapter 9 story so when the possession came this person was robbed of his speech and when it seizes him it throws him to the ground he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid, which to me is a description of epileptic seizure. Daw, daw kun inyo, tanaw mo daw kuyap. Among the most severe forms of manifestation when a demon is um, rebuked and commanded to come out is amuni. Nagawaras, nagapirek, nagalibot ang mata, nagabura, ngurog, kag, nagatiskog. Okay. Even Jesus experienced that in His deliverance ministry. Okay. Another case of possession, the deaf and the mute spirit. Okay. And then, here, another sure fire form of demonization. Engagement in occultism and astrology. Ang occultism, sigurado gin niya, nga avenue for demonization. And this is condemned in Isaiah chapter 47, verse 12. Keep on then with your magic spell, with your many sorceries, which you have labored at since childhood. Perhaps you will succeed, perhaps you will cause her. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward. That's why, hindi na inosinti, hindi na cute when you ask one another, ano ka ng imong uh, zodiac sign? Ay, ano ka gali? Wow! Diba si compatible kita? Wow, terrible. 
So, ang basis mo for decisions, ang compatibility is the zodiac sign. Ay, hindi ka maglakat subong kay ang bulan mo, hindi ni Mayogid. No? Na, muna. Sino, hindi ka kung magwa si mo balay kay siling sang zodiac sign, uh, may delikado ka sa kalayo kag bato. Ti pagtabok ya, Gid, na ipit siya sang truck, angalan sang guma, Firestone. Te, patay. Using demons, tempts us, robs us, oppresses us, can even kill us physically if we are not careful. And he carries out his territorial spirits to carry out his worldwide plan. He uses demons to carry out his territorial plans. Now, mahambal ka mo, ti Christian naman ko, Brother Lyndon, hindi na kuya ma-demonize kay Christian. I have the Holy Spirit inside me. Okay. Damo-damo, balasang pwede mahimo ang demonyo sa aton. Okay. Number one, he opposes the movement of the gospel. He prevents understanding, he blinds minds, and he hinders the progress of preachers. Basahan nyo nalang Luke 8.12, 2 Corinthians 4.3-4, 1 Thessalonians 2.18. So, when you go to a Bible study and you do not pray, when you go on sharing the gospel, you do not pray, na una na to ang kontra sa imo kay ginbutangan niya na sang kulap ang huna-huna sang gina planuhan mo nga iwitnessan that is what demons do against christians in the spiritual realm there may be occasions when you will feel that you were engaged in hand to hand combat with the spirit of a demon because Ephesians 6.10 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. In my own personal experience, wrestling with the spirit being, at least in my own observation, comes in especially involving the spirit of depression. Remember, um, Wrestling is a contact sport. Why do I say nga depression together with panic attack and with fear? Why? Because mabatsagan mong physical effect. Though hindi ka kaginawa, though hindi ka kagiho, though hindi ka karibyok in Yeshua's name, though kariyal gid sang dumog, Sometimes it is in a dream. When you are under attack, remember, recall all your experiences. When you have all those sensation that you are wrestling with a demon spirit, your spirit is wrestling against this spirit because the word of the Lord says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it is a hand-to-hand -hand combat experience. Ay nakita ko gid depression, discouragement, grabe beginning this depression and discouragement. Mahulog ka di sa depression and discouragement, it can lead to death. People can get to being suicidal when they are driven to depression and discouragement. When you lose when you lose your zeal for life, when you lose your joy. Another uh, thing that demons do with the mind is accuse us day and night. Revelations 12.10 He is called the accuser of the brethren. Hindi siya accuser of the world. Accuser of the brethren. That's why sometimes, even myself, I would sometimes have thoughts crossing my mind. Why why gid ko? Hipokritiko ka? Why why ka gid? May ka lang pambalun. Kisa ka libo ng rutin na naghalin ng mga kaisipan niman. Where do these thoughts come from? In Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, in the confrontation between Peter and Ananias and Sapphira, take note of the counter of Peter against Ananias and Sapphira, who pretended that they were giving the whole uh, purchase price of the thing that they sold. Ano siling ni Peter? Why has Satan so filled your heart? 
that you should lie to the Holy Spirit. So, Satan can fill your heart, your thoughts, your mind. I will show that in greater detail karon. Extramarital sex. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. I will point that out. There is a specific slide for that karon. Occupation with worldly pursuits. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 16. When you, as a Christian, are not thinking of your role in the kingdom, but thinking of the world, worldly pursuits, material things, that is a form of demonization that is not very apparent, but you are demonized. When you depend on human strength to do things, when there is spiritual pride and arrogance, division of the church, causing churches to quarrel, is one of the devil's schemes. But I want to point out tonight a special case. When you are overly worried, when you are a warrior, over-concerned, I want to inform you by the authority of God's word that the devil is nearer to you than anybody else. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. Look at the words of the Bible. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries or cares upon him because he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. When, Pete, when Peter said this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the context of the warning is with people who are prone to cares and fears and anxieties. He was not talking about general sins. He was talking about the particular problem of lack of faith. Ina lang, hindi kagid kasalig nga himunan ka ni Lord. Hindi kagid kasalig nga masolba ang problem mo. Do hindi kagid believe nga maumpawan ni. So palibog, palibog, palibog. Tason pagtan-aw mo sang imo nga papilis daw wala naman palibog. Naglibog ang ulo mo nga wala kay na ginapalibugan. So nagworry ka nga hindi na ni normal. Dapat ya may ginapalibugan gid ko. Wow. So, tukbon kagid sang demonyo. Ano ang koneksyon sini sa sina kung hindi ni pwede mahimo sa Christian kay Christian naman ko? What is this warning doing here when a Christian cannot be demonized? Ginsulat ni sa Christians. Be careful with anxiety. Palibog. You are a candidate for demonic attack. Number two, be careful with unforgiveness. Resentment, special case. Matthew 18. This is the parable of the unforgiving servant. May servant, ginpatawad, happy gid siya. Pagkat gwa iya sa balay sang master, may namit siyang uh, servant, may utang man siya. Hindi niya pagpatawaron. Ano ang ginimo niya? Gin... Papri, so yagid, pagkabati sang mga neighbors, gin report sa master, this is what the master did. Verse 32, Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldn't you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth or angry and delivered him to the tormentors. King James Version. Till he should pay all that was unto him, due unto him. So likewise, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if from your hearts you forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Kung hindi ka mapinatawaron, nag-warning si Jesus, likewise, I will deliver you to the Tormentors. Tormentors are demons. I will show you scriptures that that show that God delivers people who are very hard-headed to being handled by demons if only to teach them a lesson because they don't want it the gentle way 
They want it the torture way. Okay. I'll teach you in the school of torture because you cannot forgive. I will make you feel what it feels like what you're doing to other people. I will, tor I will send you to that tormentors. What Satan does to Christians? Satan sidetracks us from undivided attention and devotion to God. This is one of his most subtle attacks. Talawan nyo bila ang plaster sa 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I am afraid that a large majority of Christians are under this category. Look at this. I hope you will put up with a little of my foolishness, but you're already doing that. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband to Christ so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Si Eve na intuan, kita nga gapa Christian, Christian, nga hindi conscious ang aton bridal commitment to Jesus Christ because bride na di ang context I promise you to one husband but we do not behave like the bride of Christ we are candidates for demonization just as Eve was deceived by the serpent so Satan and his demons also incite persecution klaro gini especially in the last days Pwede siya maglabugay sa mga persecutors. The devil will put some of you in prison and you will suffer persecution. Hindi na iya sa mga politiko, hindi na iya sa gobyerno, iya na sa yawa plano. The devil designs, desires to gain a foothold. Amo na explain ta last time, Ephesians 4, 26-27. May area of control siya sa aton nga kabuhi, whether it is temper, pornography, ah... Uh, addiction, anything. Basta may foothold lang siya. Bla. Any way by which he can control us. Heretical doctrine, ignorance, and doctrinal immaturity to bring believers in actual demonic fellowship. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, wala siya kabalo. Nag-intra-intra siya sa food offered to idols. Let's be careful with the food that we are buying if they have been prayed over. Like if they bear the stamp of halal, they have been prayed over with Muslim prayers. Let's just be careful. Though nagakitid ni nagakitid ang ato ni ng mga choices, kaya daw, daw tanan na lang may stamp. And hinders prayer. We will take this up in uh, lesson four. But God can use demons for His purpose. Alaya, I need such any. If you read 1 Timothy 19-20, to there is a case of two brethren who are very hard-headed. Their name is Hymenaeus and Alexander. The Apostle Paul was making so old tasks with these people who are such troublemakers. You read 1 Timothy chapter 19, verse 20. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, I have surrendered them to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Sobra na gini ang mga mga utod ni sa gini. Hindi madala sa counseling, hindi madala istorya malinong sa pasto. Pagkamugamo gini yaya. Tinag-pray na lang si Paul. Sige, Lord, hindi naman ni mamati sa ako, hindi naman may magpamati sa kay Brother Boots, hindi naman ni magpamati. Pwede mo dispatcharan sa mga tormentors. 1 Corinthians 5 was a case of unrestrained, unrepented sexual immorality. Hindi man maginulsol, nagpray man si Paul. Second prayer in the Bible where there is a surrender of a brother in Christ to being disciplined by demonic powers. Grabe ni nga realization. Ang ginoo is not limited in his ways. You can choose to obey the Holy Spirit. You can choose to obey your pastors your brother and sister in Christ who is doing faithful counseling to you. But you are so hard-headed. So the Lord will look at His telescope. He will telescope His kingdom. Oh, here is an ugly demon. Come here. You see that son of mine who is so hard-headed? Please visit him today. 
That is in the Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes the, the Lord also uses demons to increase our faith and devotion, as in the case of Job. Gintistingan siya. Okay. In Psalm 78, verse 49, you read this psalm, the Lord was dealing with a rebellious generation. Generation. Rebellious group of people. And one of the verses in Psalm 78 says, And the Lord was angry with him, and he sent his tormenting angels to them. So, a community being disciplined by demons because they will not listen to the Lord. The Lord also used evil spirits to deceive their own human servants so that He might destroy them in the case of Ahab. And when demons are cast out, God's name is glorified and they give occasion for the performance of signs and wonders that confirm the word. Okay. There are degrees and types of demonization before we go to the deliverance and the checking of the symptoms. How do I know if I'm demonized or not? We will come to that. I want you to see that there are many forms of demonization that are not displayed by symptoms. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, he lied to the Holy Spirit, si Ananias at si Sapphira. 30 minutes lang ang distansya nilang adwa, gintumbagi silang adwa. Kung wala ginbuligan, Sang Holy Spirit si Peter to know the reality, the truth, Peter would not have known that Ananias and Sapphira were living a lie. So, demonization can be invisible. Only the Holy Spirit can expose it. But in the case of Luke chapter 13, there was a woman bound by a spirit of infirmity resulting in her physical sickness for 18 years. 18 years, a woman with a bent backbone, gakuko, had a bone problem. When she was brought to the Lord, the Lord said, Kaluoy mani. She is afflicted by a spirit of infirmity. Was she a Christian? She is a Christian. She was a Christian, I believe, because she is called a daughter of Abraham in Luke chapter 13. So, can Christians be inflicted with infirmity? Yes, if they have open gates. Is health a birthright of Christians? Yes. Is health part of the gospel of salvation? Yes. By His stripes, we are healed. So we should be watchful of health issues and determine if they may, if they may. I'm not saying that it automatically reveals, but there may be a case of spirit affliction in a case of physical infirmity. Being deceived, I already explained that. Having powers of prediction of the future, may babae na di, sa Acts chapter 16, nga puwerte magpakot. Tanda, tanda. Gid. Nagmayo ang pangabuhi iya sa pakot. Demonize siya gali, kay may spirit guide siya. They call it spirit guide. How does it work? Ti ang demonyo masugid sa iya nga may matabo to nga aksidente karon. Dason ang ina nga demonyo gasugid siya amo man ang makosang aksidente. So, believe ang tao terribly kagid kaalam sa imo. Oh. <clears throat> but other forms of demonization have very clear symptoms like mental derangement, violent manners. And when you betray the Lord Jesus Christ, that is really the highest form of demonization. Okay. How do you know what kind of demon is afflicting you? Base it on the work that he is doing. Is it fear? Then that is the spirit of fear. Is it slumber? Inablang kalipong sa imo nga bangros nga do. Bisan diin ka dalon bla do na tuyo ka lang permi ang bot nga do. Why ka man may nagets sa lecture? Duha ka oras lang pungko mo. Brad, thank you kid sa imo. Ti ano man na tunal mo? Ah. Oh, basta okay lang. Okay na. 
Naglaing kinabat siya ko sa una, I was uh, preaching. May nagpalapit sa akon nga, uh, thank you, kid, say mo, brad, say mo, wali. Kuti, ano man nalir mo? Kaya to blang joke mo. <laughs> oh, why, why? Ang joke, why, good? Uh, Deaf and dumb spirit, kung hindi ka kambal, is a spirit of infirmity. So, it is functional. A spirit of discouragement. Spirit of depression. Dason to kapigado sa imodo, hindi ka gid maka lampuas. Spirit of poverty. Ano pa gid? Ang imo pamilya, hindi gid ka buo sa marriage. Si lolo nag Si Parar, si tatay nag si Parar. Ako gahana pa lang magminyo na si Parar na mo. Grab. Ano na lang ni? So, lai naman ang espiritu nga hindi kaka buogid sa relasyon. Okay. Ang demons may ranking because some demons can only come out by fasting and prayer. Some you can command easily. Others you need to live a fasted lifestyle. This is Mark chapter 9, verse 28 to 29. Hindi ma-rebuk kag mapalin sang dumb and mute spirit ang isa ka demon. Siling nila, why could we not drive this out? Jesus replied, this kind can come out only by fasting and prayer. That's why ang mga naga-regularly fast, ang walang hapos, tawagun sa deliverance ministry. Ang mga wala ka fast, pag pamangkot mo, Brad, buligi ko na yung mga cast out. Anong kaso? Pag gina-describe, hindi ko na hindi lang gano'n. Hindi ni madala sa pabutod siya ni mo. Mapasin ko na yung iba si mangilamos ko sini. Pero kung regular ka nag-fast, kag-kosher ang iyong mga food. Hallelujah. Okay. So, these things are may mga. Okay. So, can Christians be demonized? Yes. It is implied in these passages. Okay. You give place to the devil if you do not guard your anger. You, if you do not guard your fear and your anxiety, your enemy, the devil, will devour you. So this is written to Christians. As the serpent beguiled Eve, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Written to Christians, you can receive a different spirit if you are not focused on Christ. Written to Christians, so you can be. Demonized. I'm not using the term demon possessed. I am saying demonized. Demonized means to be under the effective control or influence of a demonic power. You can have fellowship with demons if you are not careful. Offering food to eating food offered to idols is fellowship with demons. Here is fellowship with demons that is common in our culture. Daga daga. Pahimo batil. Antis iluncar, fishing boat, oh, maihau, dugo, ipinta, oh, that's fellowship with demons. Patindog balai, dugo sang manok, eh, ano da? Patindog tay tay, oh, ti, ano na? We are fellowshiping with devils, okay. Spirit of infirmity. This was a Christian because she was a daughter of Abraham. Ananias, her his heart was so filled with Satan to lie. That is why fear seized the whole church, not the neighborhood, the church, because a believer in Christ fell in by the power of the Holy Spirit. David, in First Chronicles chapter twenty-one, had a bad experience where seventy Israelites were killed. Because he counted the troops of Israel when the Torah prohibits the king of Israel from making a census so that hindi siya magsalig sa iya army, masalig siya sa Jews. So wala ginapaisip ang soldado, wala ginapaisip ang kabayo. Wala kaga, wow, okay, I have 40,000 foot soldiers, I have 300 tanks and 4,000 howitzers, I must be very strong. One time si David ginisip niya. Siling sang Bible, it was Satan who provoked or incited David to count the troops of Israel. Basahan yung 1 Chronicles 21. Napanula yan siya, kalipot lang. Lipot lang. Nagsulod lang yung idea, panulay nga idea, nga isipon ko niya. Wala yun siya mapunggan. 
patay ang 70,000 Israelites. Ginpapili pa siya sang Dios tatlo ka sa puti. Ya yeah, tago sa imo. Pirdi ka sa imo nga mga kontra 3 years. Buyan ko tat isa ka angel nga mamatay lang tatlo ka adlaw o nano pili ka. Si David naglongo si Lord sorry lang gid hindi ko kapili ka na lang pili. Sino ang nagpanulay sa iya nga nagsulod na nga ideya? Si Satanas. Christian si David. Christian. That is what I mean by demonized. Why ko nagsiling nga si Satanas nagpossess sa iya? Na demonyohan na panulayan nga ideya, panulay nga ideya. Ari gidyang perfect gidyang nga ideya, gidyang nga panulay gidyo. Matthew 16:21 to 23. Balidiktoryan gidya iniya ang nakasala. Si Peter Kaluoy man si Tutupit. Who do you say that I am? Siling sang iban. Prophet or John the Baptist. But who do you say that I am? Si Peter. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Siling sa gito. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Peter. You, the flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but the Father in heaven. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Then Jesus said, But I must go to Jerusalem because the Son of Man must suffer in the hands of sinners and they will crucify Him and in three days He will rise from the dead. Then Peter said, It must not happen, Your Honor. Do not do that. Si Ling Sang Gino, Get thee behind me, Satan. Few verses lang. Few verses lang. This is, this underscores the need to constantly guard. Constantly guard. So, mong pertita di kabalaan, basi pagwa tato karon, isa lang ka provokasyon, hindi na mo ang alignment sang pinsarta. It can happen very quickly. Okay. Practical advice to young widows, which shows demonization of Christians. May mga young married women, wala man nilagin pa ngayo, timprano na patay ang ilang mga bana. Physically able pa sila may sexual, physical need sila. Ang hambal ni San Pablo, pangita ka mo sang pamanhon liwat. Kaya kung ang inyo na nga style nga nag-date-date -date ka mo, hindi man ka mo magpakasal, some have in fact already turned away to follow Satan. I counsel younger Widows to marry, to have children, to manage their home, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Practical, says San Pablo. When you have physical needs, and you know that you have a need, do not allow it to be an open gate for demonization. Ask the Lord, Lord, you did not give me the heart of a eunuch. I am still red hot, so please, Lord, help me, Lord. So, Pray, pray to the Lord that He will give you help in this area by looking for somebody nga may pulos nga palamanhon or palangasawon. Persistent disobedience. Kung dungol-dungol kagid, hindi kagid maginulsol, ipaguba ang imong espiritu kay Satanas. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, The immoral brother who refused to repent was handed over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. Amun si Himeneus kag sa Alexander sa 1 Timothy 1.19-20. The Apostle Paul prayed that they be handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Okay. So, it is very important to monitor oneself. Monitor, give monitor. Romans 14.10, each one will give an account of himself to God. Ezekiel 18.20, the soul who sins is the one who will die. 1 Corinthians 10.12, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. Galatians 6, 1 to 5, each one should watch himself and test his own actions. 1 Corinthians 11 to 8, each one should examine himself. Colossians 3, 5 to 10, put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. We are going into the deliverance part, but I cannot resist giving the case of King Saul. Kay Kaluoy Gidney, an example of a believer who was thoroughly demonized and who ended bad. Up, si, si King Saul began well. 1 Samuel 8, 5. He was so humble when the Lord allowed him to be king of Israel nga he was so humble nga he even hid behind the supplies. Pero tikahuluyaon nga bata, hindi sa tikalon. 
He was made into another man because the Holy Spirit came upon him. In fact, he even prophesied. He was given a new heart. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, the Spirit of God came upon him mightily. He became even for a short while a prophet. He prophesied. Chapter 10 verse 10, But one day, he had a small open gate. What was that? Jealousy. Did tugid nagsugod. Kay pagpatay ni Tutu David kay Gulayat na batian niya ang kanta sa dalan, Saul killed his thousand but David his ten thousand. Saul killed his thousand but David killed his ten thousand. Tingnan, sige siya inom. Boy, shit man nga pangabuhin. Sin, oh man si Tutu David niya nga. Dito, gamay lang. Jealousy. Jealousy. Look, look at how it became a foothold and then it became a stronghold. Jealousy was a foothold. Then, he was given over to depression. Nasubuan siya nga, second lang siya kay Tutu David. Ang mga girls, wala na nag-adulate siya. Tunatanan kay Tutu David. Hmm. Then, temper and anger mixed with depression. And then, ginapinan ni Jonathan si David. Diyutayan niya man, pinatay mismo si Jonathan kay nag-apin kay David. Then, diyutayan niya, pinatay gid si David mismo. And then, sa ulihi, desperate na siya. May gira siya. Nakamitir siya sa pagpatawag sa espiritu ni Samuel. Prophet nga napatay na, kaya wain nagid laigay sa kabuhi iya. Ahay, the Lord said, I will destroy you and your family and I will take the kingdom away from you. And he ended by committing suicide. He was a believer in the Lord. You, we can be demonized if we are not careful. Ang mga mananatabo kay King Solomon, ang demonization niya was sex. He had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. Okay. Okay. But, one thing demons cannot do, they cannot separate us from the love of God. Demons can never separate us from the love of God. Okay. How do we deal now with demonization? Please look at these verses carefully. Because this is where we will draw our strength. Grabe gidya. Luke 10 verse 9. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy. It is not just in Christ. From Christ to us, I have given you authority. Romans 16.20. Katahom ginisang Romans 16.20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Wala siya nang hambal under my feet. Your feet. So tanan ta ito nga ginpang uso ito nga mga acts of demonization. Lasako na natun through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kita ang mapirdi sa fear, sa depression, sa immorality, pornography, ah, infirmity, disease, affliction, depression, etc. Kita mapirdi sina sa authority ni Kristo. Romans 8, 37 to 39. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Grabe ni nga mga versikulo. Look for these verses. Always eat the food of these verses so that we will have boldness against the enemy. Ephesians 6.11 Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your son against the devil's skins. 1 John 3.8 The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Mark chapter 6 verse 7, calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. Luke 10, 17, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. But may sugpo na da, but do not rejoice that the demons submit 
to you in my name. Rather rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you lose on earth will be bound. Grabe, gid lang authority ta in Christ. But first, we must have a personal relationship with Christ. Hindi pwede laktod. Why? May guwapo-guwapo nga case sa Acts 19, sang mga nagpanglaktod. Kabati sila sa authority ni Christ, nga exercise ni Paul. Wala sila nag-establish personal relationship with Christ. Kabati lang sila nga, grabe ito si Tutok Paul, no? Pag amoy na, oh, in Jesus name, nga pirek ang ano. Nga kita man, nakatachip, pangitaan ta demonyo. Hindi na din mga panulay man. So, naglakat sila, isadyan sila mo, no? Mga itinerant Jewish exorcists and seven of them were sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest. Si Tito, ano, Reverend Archbishop or whatever, eh, are ni in our bloodline ang atun nga pamilya ta sa mga religyoso. Nakatabla, mamalbal ta demon nyo. So one time, may nakita sila nga demon possess, baw sumabat ang evil spirito, katahom. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> Ay, terrible. Neka, neka, neka. Then again, si Jesus kilala ko, si Tutok Paul kilala. Neka, si, sino ka gani? <laughs> oh, are you? Oh? Are naman ng uba-uba. Oh? Kaya mahilig ni sa sex ng mga demons. Oh? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled of that house naked. Ah, rin naman, no? Gusto yagin nga mabihangan ang mga, ano. Grabe gini. We better know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. So what must we do? We must accept that we are sinners. Romans 3.23 All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 There is none righteous, no, not one. We must accept that we are worthy of death because of our sins. And therefore, we must confess our sins. Because Romans 6.23a says, The wages of sin is death. But because we are willing to confess, First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we must acknowledge what Jesus did for us on the cross. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Ephesians 2.8 9 to 10. It, for it is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is uh, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, not by works, so that no man shall boast. And we must accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Hindi ni pwede nga lakturan. John 1, 12. For as many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become the children of God. And then we must invite Him to come in and reign and rule in our life. Revelation 3.20 I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If any man shall hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and I, I will be with him and he'll be with me. Question. Pwede na siya himoon sa understanding lang? Understood naman na, brada. O okay na na. Kainchindi na na si Lord nga. Amo na. No sir. No ma'am. You must say it. You must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Hari, gid siya sa kabuhay mo. Sundun mo gid ang iya ginasiling. Palapit, hindi gid pwede nga understood. Amuna, nga please understand, when some of us are leading some of us to a prayer of decision, ginapabungat gid. Kaya klaro-klaro gido, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Pero sa ang kasal, ginakasal kita, mangkuta, do you accept this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Hindi ka pwede ka hambal. Understood na na. Amo na nga ugtas ko siya. Understood na na. No, you have to say, Yes, the priest or the pastor will not proceed if you do not say, Yes, I do. You must say, Lord, I receive you into my... Please come in. Hambal mo gina. If you have not yet said that, you must say it today. Now, anong inhimo ni Jesus para sa aton so that we will go into deliverance? This is what He did. 
when he died on the cross and rose from the dead, he spoiled the principalities and powers. He made a show or show of them openly, triumphing over them by the cross. Ang word nga spoil is to plunder. Atong organizational chartos ang mga demonyo, ginratsyada to ni Jesus tanan. Tad, tad gito sila itong mga ranking, ranking to. Ginubos ya to sila courts. Kagin parade sila, gin exhibit, digmatizo in Greek, which means gin panggapusan, kagin pangguyon according to the Roman model of displaying a foreign king who is defeated in battle to make an acclamatory procession. Gin pakahuy ang gid ni Jesus, ang demonyo, ang yawa, kag ang mga demonyo niya, sang nabanhaw siya sa cross. Nabanhaw siya sa minatay when he was when he was crucified at the cross and amo na ang authority nga ginhatag niya. Paano galing nga a nga damo pa baldado nga Christian kay why man sila kabalo nga grabing ilang authority kag wala man nila gina exercise. So we need to operate in this authority. We must need to assert this authority. If we are, for example, like a policeman, we have a badge, we have a forty-five caliber pistol, etc. The whole force of the government is behind us. We have to stand our ground. The kingdom of God will back us up when we encounter the enemy. So, what do we need to do now? We are going into deliverance first. We must pray. Search me, O God. See if there is any wicked way in me. Subong, we are now going into the process of self-examination as we are closing this presentation. We, ask, we are asking the Lord, Lord, please know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive, wicked, wicked unclean way in me. Here are some helps checklist. Number one, examine yourself, check your emotional symptoms. Number one, do I have compulsions? Compulsions. Ina lang mind mo daw nagasiling nga pwede man nakahulat pero pili ton mo gid himoon mo gid ka compulsive sa imo I'll give you one example of compulsiveness Ina bala kapoy na ang tanan pwede man makahulat pero galing kay may kasuguan ka lang gid ya nga himoson gid ya dayon bisan gamala sakit na ang tao pili ton mo gid kay may Kasuguan ka lang gidyaya nga amo na. Hindi ka na kabatsyag sang ginabatsyag sang iban. Kay fix na gidyang mind mo kay amo gidiyong amo gidiyong. Why is that a sign of demonization? That is a controlling spirit. You always want to be in control. Compulsiveness is a symptom of a controlling spirit. Do I have frequent things I do which I regret? Nang permi lang ko nga, I'll give you an example ha. Common gini, ina ang gamit sang dila nga makambal ka sakit. Nga ikaw mismo sa ulihi, daw na ginulsul man, nga ang agin hambal ko man to. Pero kung maprobokar ikaw, nga pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-p
Ugtasan ka do pet pib mo gidjab lang. Ini nga adlaw ang security guard sa subdivision. Sa buwas ang tricycle driver naman. Basta inang ano lang lang. Pangita ka lang balagi dyan. Basta bala mas hagud mo lang bala ang espiritosang o ari pagid. Depresyon. Depresyon. Bisan grabe na ang kalipay sa ano, do kabudlay gidya pagwaon ang yuhom sa but do bawal gidya si imo bala nga malipay sa ginirin sa Diyos kay ang imo nga talaksan sang pagka-espirituhan nun bala ko nang itsura mo daw kamatis nga napusa. Dip wala ka blood joy. Wala ka gidya blood joy sa kag sa imo nga Christian life, sa imo nga life. Nang hindi ka bala mapasinalamaton nga pag-aga. Hallelujah, Lord. Beautiful day na pan. Ina bala nga bangon pa lang ka, bugat na. Dahil soon you go through the day, wala ka peace. Bawo, grabe gini. Sure signs of demonization. Hindi ni umbras ang Holy Spirit ni. Hindi man ni imo, spirito, gusto. Si kay sin o palabing espiritu. Nasun wala ka man passion, enthusiasm for life and things of God. Do hindi ka namitan nga buhi ka, nga makaalagad ka. Kundi daw ginaguyod mo lang ang adlaw mo. Kung gabi, gahulat ka sa noong mag-aga. Pag-aga, gahulat ka naman sa noong mag-gabi. <laughs> Amun ang katahom, sang kurtis, ang liog mo, kay nahitad siya mo. Wow, kanami. Gini. Oh, sa noong mag-aga. pag <laughs> Ay, grabe. Sign of demonization na. Okay. Do I avoid fellowship with the brethren? Do, in, do mas happy ka nga ikaw na lang, hindi ka gusto nga ma-meet sa mga otod sa ginoo? Have a critical spirit, always finding fault with everything and anything and many things? Do I have a complaining spirit? Things that are not always up to par, not acceptable to our standards. Are there behaviors I cannot control? Ako ay hab ay ako ano ni real ni sa ako nga challenge kay ang isa ko ka problem kid impatience. Hindi kid ko ka and I know I know patience is the fruit of the spirit. I know. Pero basta i-detain mo ko sa traffic, gaanda na lang ng mata ko yung peripheral vision ko kung may makalusot ko. Ang mo ginalain, si Armang uyat na sa dayon sa... <laughs> Kaya nakontra ko gidyab lang na i-detain mo lang. Though, gusto ko lang gidyab lang na life will just go on. So that, that, is, that is one thing that I had to yield to the Lord and keep on yielding to the Lord. Because I... I hate it when I am being made to wait in in uh, traffic. So, kisa bisan lay layo para basta gagihu lang ah. Basta gagihu lang so I waste more fuel and but I feel better that things are moving. Oh, na amo na no. Ari pagido, ari grabe gini nga sign of demonization no. Terrible gini oh. Am I always in relational trouble? Po. Oh, almost every day my isyo ka may problema sa isa ka utod. Sang last week si anong problema mo subong ang nagtambag siya naman ang may problema si Lasun si Mana may lain naman inalang daw nagdagakabuhi ka sa gamo sa relasyon. Do hindi kid ka mapahuwayan sang gamo sa relasyon. Are, are we always feeling harassed not being able to do things from the spirit of rest. This was also a struggle for me and I would like to believe that I have made good progress here because nagiging conscious ko ni. Sang pagsugo diri tudlo sa nihop, sang sabat, rest. So, gin pasul ko ito, rest, 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 rest. So, bisan mag-rest ko, kinahamba lang ko ni Ann, kisa aga tulog ko, makawanga batsyag ko kamot. Hingko, gina, ano mo ko? Hindi kayo bisan ka, pahuway ka, kakurisong ang imo nga... So, gina, pre-ubila niya ko, rest, rest. Kika, andar nga po ng ulo ko mo, kikigda na ko. I just love to work that uh, even when it is rest. Uh, so, amo na, no? Physical symptoms, are. Do I have psychosomatic diseases? Ano ning psychosomatic diseases? Inaablang, hindi man ma-diagnose, gina, pero, no, ara, manada. No? Okay. 
do I have frequent allergies? I was researching on demonization and allergies, not, not all, but some or sometimes many allergies are afflictive diseases or disturbances caused by demon spirits. Unless nga na-trace mo ang root source. Pagkaon, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Pero ang rule gid tani ang anak sang Dios healthy sa iya ginakaon hallelujah praise the lord uh, ga avoid siya sang mga artificial coloring etc etc nga indi siya tani gid pirmi ma allergy so kung do ka pirmi lang gid sang allergya o si saon niya if there is an area of his life where the demon spirits have an opportunity to harass. Ari pagid, do I have difficulty sleeping? Nan. Rest or sleep is one of the blessings of the Lord. Why can you not sleep? Na. That is a sign of a restless spirit that is not resting in the Lord. So there may be an area in your life that is demonized. Is there any abnormality in your lab test that is uh, frequent? Check your markers. Then ask the Lord, Lord, why do I have this? How about a lingering disease or ailment nga do hindi gid maghalin? It may be a spirit of infirmity. So una, grabe gid ang asma ko, chronic asthma. Chronic. I learned spiritual warfare then I filled up the checklist of the IFP, confessed many of the revelations there nga hindi amo sa kabuhi ko, then went for, until now, by the grace of God, I have been freed from chronic asthma. Do I always get sleepy in church? Ah, terrible. Basta simba na, katahong gina sa church, ka peaceful, ka ka restful, why gid ko may napudyutan sa wali? I am really blessed by your church. I don't get anything. I always feel good. I sleep. No? When the word of God is taught or preached. Do I feel a physical unwellness every time I am about to do a spiritual service to God? Ina lang maalagad ka na sa Diyos. May hadlang, may, nagsakit ang imo nga kuku. May kolor ang ilong mo nga hindi amo. Pero do tanan na lang ang imo balikawang daw maayom lang ang habyog sang una, nagngutngut, abot na. Basta iya sang Ginoo ga problema. Okay. These are symptoms. Some symptoms described in the Bible of demonized life amo na ang sa Mark chapter 5, unusual physical strength, fits of rage, split personality or disintegration. Nagran to Jesus for help siya yet nagretreat man siya. Lord, help me, pero mga atras man. Ah, mga. Schizophrenia, split personality, disintegrated personality. Do hindi ka blakabalo, ano gila gusto mo matabo? Resistance to spiritual things, clairvoyance, excessive sensibility or clairvoyance. Do may sense ka, kabalo siya nga si Jesus, is inablang third eye, third eye nga mga concept. Kabalo, gila ko nga, amo na. Ba, pero may ka na kabalo siya na? Aba, sinong spirit guide mo nga nga kabalo ka? No? He knew immediately without prior info that it was Jesus. Then, ang tingog na galain. Pao? Galain ang tingog niya. No? And then, occultic transference. But check yourself also spiritually. These are very helpful ways of knowing if we are demonized in some area. Do I have difficulty praying? Nah. If the answer, if the honest answer to that is yes, then the Reason is defilement. Defilement. Why? Lecture ni Sister Mylene, Sister Rita, defiled, clean, unclean. It disqualifies you from worship. Physical nga lesson to sa Torah, pero may spiritual point to. So ang music na ginapamatian, ang language na everyday, in the godly, in the edifying, so, nagadal sang aton nga spiritual senses. Bugat mga munyo, hindi takabuylo pa mga munyo. Do I have difficulty worshipping? Natakan ko kung nakalawig na sang kanta o okay man lang. Do I have difficulty listening to the word? 
Wow. Do I have inner peace and calm? Can you describe yourself as a person nga may inner peace and calm? Abi, honestly lang gid be. Gelakat kita, do we feel that we have inner peace and calm? Do I sense a wonderful bonding with the brethren? Kung mag-meet ang mga Christians, do you feel a leap in your spirit? Kanami nga mag... Do I have a hunger to know God more? Do I have an inner impulse to sing to the Lord? Okay. Check your family tree, your history. Is there a frequently occurring sin in the family line? And a frequently occurring disease in the family line? So, i-check mo. Are there specific concrete sins in the family tree? Idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, verbal, physical violence, rage, anger, sexual immorality, broken marriage. Is there an ancestral curse or a verbal curse released against you or your family? May natabo sang una nga si tatay mo nagdesider gin nga pakaslaya si nanay mo kag si lolo mo nagsilinga. Maigod gid kamo sa kapigaduhon. You try to recall that kun na confess na siya kag na break because kun wala na na break, kun wala na na confess. That is a legal basis for demonization because of the principle of authority and covering. Your covering is your parent. If a verbal curse has been released, unconfessed, unbroken, it continues to haunt the family tree. Has there been dedication made of you to other entities, beings, or personalities other than God or the Lord Jesus Christ? How about spirit anointings of ancestors? Example, animist ancestors, faith healers. Basi may lulo ka nga. Pare, or faith healer, or animist ancestors. Ti, kung may ara, ti i-plaster lang sa ginoo. Kag i-patinloe ang family tree. How about conception traumas? Sanggin... Bunag ka, anong sitwasyon sang relasyon ni nanay kag ni tatay mo? Ano ang emotional, spiritual condition ni nanay mo? Permi lang siya gareklamo, akig, permi lang siya gaugtas kay tatay mo, kay ginatransmit na sa fetus, kag sa embryo, kag sa baby. Ginapick up na sang espiritu mo. So, pwede na nga i-demonize na kung wala na siya na heal. Now, how about previous sexual contacts? What spirits were transmitted to us when we were sexually promiscuous before we became Christians. Has that been confessed and renounced? Have we asked the Lord to cut off the spirit cross-pollination resulting from illicit sexual contact? Parehas ang Genesis 6 nga problem and situation. How about ang mga organizations nga gin pang join natin? Okay. Before the organization, a curse objects is there any a curse object in the house? Example sang a curse object. Because when you bring in an a curse object, Genesis 7, 26, you also are a curse. That is the Torah. Anything a curse brought into the house curses everything in the house. Okay. Example. Uh, any physical thing you worship or pray to other than God, any immoral object like pornographic materials, sex toys, drugs, artifacts used for worship. There is a case one time of suicide and depression that I was able to minister to. Nga sa wall, may knife nga katoktokon. Siling ko di ina naghalin. Naghalin sa isa ka Southeast Asian country. Siling ko tinga nga ara na da. Kaya na ka-teach ko lecture sa isang amun ng gift nila as an artifact. Singko, para sa ano na siya? Di ginagamit na sa animal sacrifices. A curse object na. Do you know that many of the Southeast Asian dolls, like the Garuda doll of Indonesia, is a demonic doll because Garuda, Garuda Airline of Indonesia, is the name of a prince demon. So kisa, Culturally, the exchange gift, it's a doll that looks like, like that, like that. Oh. Or maybe an object of uh, cultural, historical. You, you check. What does it stand for? Is it something that is amuna? Okay. Sometimes they are anointed or prayed over. No? Uh, depicting foreign gods or demons. 
Have you entered into territories without being covered? Ang mga turista di sa aton nga mahiligid mag-travel. Selfie, selfie, picture, picture, okay? Pero ini siya ancient temple. Thousands of years na da ang animal sacrifices, ang ano, ngali kay ka picture perfect. Oh, so oh, smile, smile amo ni, ni nga anggol amo na. That is an accursed place. You you should not be rejoicing and documenting as if you are so happy to be part of that place when that has been devoted to an anti-Christ, anti-God activity for hundreds and thousands of years. So you pray for covering. If you are traveling, you pray for covering. Lord, I am traveling with a family. This is something I cannot avoid. Uh, okay, I take, Lord, cover me with your precious blood. I do not approve of what happened. But you do not announce it to the tourist bus. They will throw you into the river. Okay? Okay. How about occultic practices? Sang una, sang high school ka, kay gusto mo mabalan, sino ang crush ang imo best friend? Nag-spirit of the glass ka? O with board? Divination, palmistry, tarot card, horoscope, crystal ball gazing, consulting medium spirits, consulting the dead, amulets, talisman, lucky charms, love magic, cured by uh, paid healers, etc., etc. Nakaintra ka sa mga astral projection, psychokinesis, speaking in trance, hindi ni speaking in tangsa. Inaabalang, gapakadto ka sa, is, gapasulod ka, isa ka, espiritu, nga mahambal, paagi sa imo. Ti ampang malang to atorni o ti kay gusto kita mo mabalan ko sinong crush niya no kay hindi kasi yaman no gid yo automatic writing telepathy clairvoyance having spirit guides rad and pendulum hypnosis spirit of the bullpen grabe ni I do na I did not know that there was a spirit of the <laughs> spirit of the bullpen no oh, grabe ni ah rio sororities and fraternities blood packs Ay, gamay mo lang to. Ano ba kay, ti, kay I need to belong? So, jutay mo lang to ah. Gin, gin mix na mo sa ano, kag nag-inom kami. Ah. Toning, mysterious triangle, yoga, silva mind control. Okay. Have you joined uh, organizations like INI, Maharishi, Transcendental Meditation, Theosophical Society, any organization that speaks to or prays to any other person other than God, the Father, the Lord, Jesus. Martial Arts? Okay. I will tell you martial arts. Martial Arts. You, do you know that Satan is such a cheat? By, by the way, uh, the physical training of martial arts is good. It's the spiritual aspect of martial art where you perform Because ikaw nga brown belt, ga, amo na, sa black belt, kag sa port dan, kag ato siya, may ginasaluduhan pag ito. Then down through the generations, may temples na sila, Shaolin Temple, Kung Put Temple, whatever, where they all do, then you all pass it on through, down the line. So you just did not know that by the principle of surrogate, surrogate or vicarious worship, you just worship PBMA, Mount Manahaw Court, Freemasonry. Freemasonry. If there are Masons who are listening to this right now, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, check your book on Masonry and compare it with the Bible. Check the vows of the Mason. What do they say when they promise that they will not betray the secrets of the organization? What do they say? That they agree to have their throats slit and their intestines brought out of their stomach and things like that? You make those vows. I ask you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, if you care for your soul, check what it is that you swear to in Masonry. Koltik Risalista. May mga Rizalista who appreciate Rizal as a hero. But the worship aspect, the cultus, the cultic aspect is very dangerous. So now, we commit our life to God. Make it definite. 
repent and confess, you are trusting your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, ask for His help, uproot and remove all demonizations in your life, and ask for the help of His angels. Address the demons and command them to come out. The concept of the city within. We are near the end of this. Few more slides. It's like a city. Proverbs 16.32 Your life is like a city. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city. A man without self-control is like a city, broken into and left without walls. Some cities are so beautiful in some aspects, but behind it are slum areas. Some areas of our life, the things that we display in church, display to others, they are so beautiful. But there are areas in our life that are not uh, wonderful at all. So, amo man ang aton nga life. Some areas, daw na plaster ta na sa ginoo, but some areas, ginatago-tago ta. So, there are areas within our city. Ang aton nga emotion is one part of our city, our mind, our tongue, our sex life, our appetite, our finances, our leisure. Are all these areas of our city yielded to the Lord? Ask the help of the revealer of mysteries, Gela Rash. This is one of the names of God that is very least appreciated. He is a revealer of mysteries. You ask Him, Lord, reveal to me things that are hidden in my life that are the result of my life not being blessed. Lord, nga nga hindi ko blessed, Lord, gidhaw. Nga nga do may ano man. Pray to the God who reveals mysteries. This is His name in Hebrew, Gelarash, Revealer of Mysteries. There is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Siling sa Daniel. He reveals mysteries from the darkness. Mga things nga natabunan, ipagwa yan na. But you have to ask Him. Daniel had to ask. Because the Lord will not reveal if you do not ask. Ask him, Lord, reveal the mystery of my life. Why I am not, why I am so ha unhappy and so. If after deliverance, a person becomes delivered, kagin pa cast out mong mga demons na gulua, then pray for sealing if he or she is a believer or a Christian. Is seal meaning it close ang gates. Pray that the enemy will not come back and re-enter. But if he is demonized. You had to cast out the demon before you could counsel him. Then the demon has come out, and then he can now listen to you. Then share with him the gospel, lead him to Christ. Then pray for sealing. Because of if you do not lead him to Christ, and Christ does not reside in him, the demon will come back with seven others more wicked than he. And if there is no person stronger than the strong man, the life of that person will be worse than before. Maintain your freedom in Christ. Always trust and abide in Jesus, the stronger than the strong man. Always be led by the Spirit. Always be humble, asking the Lord for help. Always wear the armor of God. Strive to develop a life of fasting and prayer. Work with a team. You are in error because you do not know the Scriptures or the power of God. Learn the Scriptures. Know the Bible. Aren't demons supposed to come out instantaneously when you command them to go out? Not necessarily, even Jesus had to repeatedly tell this demon to come out because the demon did not want to go out at first, so they begged Jesus repeatedly. So, be patient if the demon does not go out right away. Do not say that there is something wrong with you or something wrong with your faith. Sometimes it requires warfare. Um, demons have to be commanded out. If you do not command them to come out, they will not come out. You have to tell them, get out of my life. Come out. Mark 9, 20, 25. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him. Come out. Come out. You have to release those words, come out. You can even command them to behave. Because sometimes when they come out, they create so much trouble. Tell them, like Jesus said, Hold your peace and come out of him. Behave. I don't want any display of kalukuhan. Just come out quietly and Jesus commanded the demons to come out. But sometimes there will be physical manifestation. Itching, fainting, vomiting, kicking, seizures, crying out loud. 
before they come out, sometimes they manifest physically in that manner. Remember for deliverance, humble yourself. Admit that you have a problem. You choose between your dignity and deliverance. Some people will choose dignity and will not go for deliverance. Direct Prince said this, let go of dignity and go for deliverance. You will get back your dignity later. Mambal, ay, kahuluya niya, mapadeliverance ko. Wow, kahuluya niya, mo ako niya dignity. Abi na ila ko, may mga panulay ko, itsura ko ng nadaan, do kalapit ng nadaan, karon. Ay, hindi na lang ko yung magpadeliverance. Ah, ati, okay man, dipindi na sa imo. no? So, confess, repent. Let the truth set us free. After that, Keep your freedom in Christ. Soak in His Word. Soak in the worship. Soak in prayer. Walk and live in the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And keep short accounts with God. Inabla kong convicted ka nga sala. Hinolsol ka dayon. Hindi na pagpalawiga ang sala. This is how we will end tonight. Please allow me to do this with us. I think this is from the Lord. Simple prayer for deliverance. We do it the Holy Spirit way. The Holy Spirit is called the Ruach HaKodesh. He is the breath of life. When the Lord breathed into the nostrils of Adam, the breath of life, Adam became a living soul. So tonight, as we close, I will lead us in a simple prayer. Okay, naga pray ko. Lord, after this uh, lecture, we'll take a break. Hindi tanay pahuayan ta ang next lesson ta kay heavy stuff na siya. Kuwaan ta na abuhilo. I have to spiritually prepare for that. We all need to spiritually prepare for that. So, Lord, how do I end this? And this is the inspiration that came to me. Bring back the people to where it all began in Genesis. The breath of life. I will ask that the Lord will deliver us from any form of demonization through this simple prayer which we will do now. We will say, Lord, be the breath of life, be the Ruach HaKodesh that we inhale. Then, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, you say, Lord, I inhale life, I inhale blessing, I inhale freedom, I inhale deliverance. Then, when you exhale, you tell the Lord, Lord, I exhale, exhale and breathe out anything unclean. All works of the devil. Lord, as I inhale you, Holy Spirit, as I inhale you, I inhale your life. I inhale your holiness. I inhale your healing. I inhale your freedom. I exhale defilement. I exhale exhaustion. I exhale depression. And that is what we will do tonight as we come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, tonight, salamat, good Lord, that you have given us authority over demons and serpents and scorpions. Salamat, good Lord, that we have Jesus Christ in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Lord, tonight as we stand on the ground of the cross, we thank you for the blood that Yeshua HaMashiach spilled on the cross that cleanses us from every sin. Lord, we reaffirm with the confession of our mouth that Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Deliverer. Jesus is our Redeemer. Jesus is the Captain of our salvation. Jesus is our Blessor. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, you have given us freedom, Lord, from the bondage of the enemy. And Lord, right now, as we pray and come into your throne of grace, Lord, we ask you, please help us to inhale again the Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of life, the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we inhale, we inhale your life. We inhale freedom. We inhale deliverance. We inhale health. We inhale peace. We inhale, Lord God, wholeness. And Lord, we exhale and re remove and expel 
all the works of the enemy. Lord, we exhale and and blow out, Lord, all the the spirit of infirmity, depression, Lord, all the negative spirit, all the demonic spirits, Lord. Lord, as we inhale you, Lord, exhale out, Lord, all the works of the enemy in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Lord, that by this simple act of faith, Lord, right now, people are being delivered, Lord. You are releasing, Lord. Lord, let it come gently, Lord. Let it come gently, Lord. We forbid the enemy from manifesting. We do not want any show, showmanship of the enemy. But Lord, right now, kakita mo, Lord, nakita mo ang tagipusoon sang kada isa sa amon. We are hungry for freedom. We are hungry for deliverance, Lord. Lord, you have come to set us free. And right now, Lord, we inhale your life. We inhale your liberty. Thank you, Lord, for the breath of life. Thank you, Lord, for the breath of freedom. Thank you for the breath of deliverance. And Lord, as we continue to inhale you, Lord, we continue to exhale all the works of the enemy. We rebuke, we renounce, we reject all the works of the enemy. Spirit of poverty, spirit of infirmity, spirit of depression, spirit of fear, spirit of, of disunity, spirit of criticism, spirit of impatience, spirit of rage, temper, anger, spirit of jealousy, spirit of resentment, spirit of unforgiveness, we reject you. Come out of us in Jesus' name. Just come out in Jesus' name. Go out in Jesus' name right now and release the people of the Lord. Release the people of the Lord. Release the people of the Lord. Lord, we ask for the help of your holy angels to just bring out all this demonization. You know, just cleanse us, Lord. Just purify us, Lord. And Lord, we close all the gates, Lord. We, we do not allow the enemy to come back. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your word. Fill us, Lord, with your peace. Fill us, Lord, with your power, Lord. And do not allow the enemy to come back. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, even when we get out of this place, let the deliverance process continue, Lord, in our home. Let those who need to spend more time with you, Lord, in quietness, Lord, continue with this prayer of deliverance. Lord, we pray to the revealer of mysteries. Expose any area of our life that is not right, Lord God, that we may confess it. Lord, salamat gid, salamat gid, salamat gid. And we thank you for our freedom in Yeshua HaMashiach. In His mighty, precious name we pray. Amen, 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 amen.